Hey, what is up nation? In this session, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make roofs in SketchUp. Alright, so I have three different models here, or base models of, a, of like a structure, and uh, I'm going to go into how I would create a roof for each of these. We're going to explore some different options. One of the things that we're not going to do today is talk about how you would do this with plugins. You can do this with plugins. In my experience, it's been sort of hit or miss, depending on the plugin, but I always think that it's good to just know how to do something in the vanilla version of SketchUp, so that's what we're going to be learning today. Just be prepared for that. And today I'm using the SketchUp app, which is available online. So if this looks a little unfamiliar to you, that's why. You can see here I have this part of the, let's say this is the building. And uh, I wanna add a roof on this. And let's say at this end I want a gable. So that means it'll be like a flat end. And on this side I want a pitched roof. And then there'll be a little a valley here. And we'll just, you know, this will just turn the corner. The ridge will turn there. Let's say that's our design for this, that we were getting a little bit of variety. The way that I would start is obviously make this a group, a separate group, and then I'm gonna hit L and I'm gonna come out 12 inches just for the length of, or the width or depth of my eave, a little overhang here of your roof. Typically you'll see that on roofs, unless you have a flat roof. So I came out 12 and then the thing up here is in America, I'm not sure how it works in other parts of the country, but uh, you have a slope that defines your roof. So people will call it like a four and 12 roof, which is four um, inches rise for every 12 inches of run. Or you can think about it in feet too, it's the same, just a ratio. So I'm gonna put four, let's say that's what we want for this. Uh, and that way we're not just arbitrarily making our roof, we're actually getting something that kind of makes sense. So let's do four up here as well. So I press L, that's what I've been doing to make these little lines. And then I snap to this endpoint, held shift, and then drug off into space. And that allowed me to extend that line um, out. And I can do the same thing on this side. And then if I just take this and click there, you can see that uh, what happens is that this fills in because I have these two little lines here. There's some extra faces. If we delete those, um, we're good. And I can delete these as well. So now I have this little face. Now what I would do in here is just come in, draw a line to here, and then holding shift, snap to this uh, midpoint. That way I get a, a line. Now we have our little path, so what I can do is just select these two lines. I'm holding shift there to select these two. And then over here, I'm gonna use the follow me tool and just click this. Uh, and then I can select this, uh, reverse faces, and I have my slope. Uh, earlier I said I wanted this little part here to be a pitch, so what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did on the other side, 12 inches here and then up on the blue axis, vertically four. Connect this and then hold shift and drag in that direction. Now I'm going to hit R and select this and I'll have an intersection point here that I can draw to here. Then I can take this point, hit M to move it. Move it back to when I snap here and then delete these things little extra pieces. Now I didn't extend this out, it's fine. I'm not gonna change the pitch um, in there, but I still want that overhang. So I'm just gonna select that phase and hit 12 to move it out. And that way we still have our little eave. And that's how you would do that. Now if I move to this next one, what I'm gonna do is select this face. I'm gonna tap into this group, hit Control C to copy that face. Right click, hit paste in place. Trying to find the offset, so that's here. If I do this, let's say we do 16 for this one. And I'm gonna just select in there. You can't really see what I'm doing, uh, but there's these extra lines from where I offset. Um, and I just wanna get rid of those. So I'm just gonna try to select those lines and delete them. There we go. So now we have this guy. Now if we wanna do 12 on here, 
Let's say 12 and six will do for this one. I'm just gonna, drawing a diagonal line will give me the center point of this. I'm gonna come here. Again, come in 12 because that is the pitch. I don't wanna come all the way in since now my Eve is has a depth of 16. Come up six. And then I can just continue this up in this direction. Just keep going. Up. And then hit E to bring up my eraser and I have this guy. Now, because of how I did this, um, this edge condition is gonna be the same all the way around. All right, select this face. Uh, and basically what that's doing is it's choosing the boundary of this path or the boundary of this shape as the path for the next piece that I select. So when I choose the follow me tool, I can then select the shape that I want to go along that path uh, and it just makes all of that for me. So I'm gonna reverse that face and then make this a group. So we have those two. Now this one is a little bit more difficult and I'm gonna do this in a different way. What I'm gonna do is come into this, select that face, hit Control C to copy, right click, paste, and then choose the offset tool. Let's do, I don't know, let's say 24 inches for this one just keep shaking it up a little bit. I'm gonna double click into this, right click, hit make group. And then I just wanna get rid of this other stuff as well. Okay, so we've got rid of those extra lines in here. And then I can actually just take this and for this particular method, I'm just gonna drag this up. So now this should be a solid. If I click on this, um, you can see at the top it says solid group under entity info. That's what you wanted to say. If it doesn't say that when you do this, you have an extra line somewhere or you have like two, two pieces. So just make sure it says uh, solid group uh, and you may need to do a little sleuthing if it doesn't say that. So let's start there. And then what I'm gonna do is actually do the same thing we did before. Let's go 12 and we've done four, we've done six. Let's say 12, 12 and 12, super steep roof. And then I'm gonna take this, do the same thing, but I'm just gonna overextend it. Just make a large roof. Okay, so let's say we have this, uh, and then I'm just gonna copy this out a little bit, make it a group. And then I'm gonna draw the inverse of this, just to illustrate what I'm doing. So uh, now I have this shape. Now what I can do, uh, delete that original one. I could have just flipped it. Um, I also could have drawn this from the beginning, but is let's say I just keep this there. Um, I'm gonna hit M to move and then control to make a copy of it. So I'm gonna put this here. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here. Um, there's these icons here that allow you to do Boolean operations. Um, basically Boolean operations are you can take two solid objects and perform a Boolean operation to unify them or subtract them or trim them. Lots of different cool things you can do. So I'm gonna choose subtract. And then in this operation, you subtract the first object from the second. So in this, I'm gonna choose that. You can see that shape gets subtracted out. So we can do that again for every instance of this. So if I come over here and I'm making sure this extension is on the outside of the roof. If you have this inside, uh, then you may start creating other pieces uh, that you don't intend to. So you just have to be kind of careful about where you put things. Subtract the first from the second. Just have to remember that order. Okay, so we have these two angles. Now I can take this guy, bring him over press the up arrow key to lock to the blue axis and you can see there I went 180 degrees. I can come here now and you come here as well. Subtract the first from the second. Oh, <laughs> I'm messing up that order. There we go. And then we can do that again. Subtract first from the second. And now you can see that we have a, a little bit of weird roof. Um, this is starting to look how I want it to look though. You can start to imagine what this could look like. So let's take this. We're gonna have a few of these guys. So we can put this one here. 
we can put this one let's go at this corner this one here and then we can come inside and put that at that corner so now we'll have three operations for this subtract the first from the second subtract first from the second subtract first from the second so now we have like some weird stuff going on but we're almost finished I can now take this, press up, a lock to the blue axis, rotate this 90 degrees. Select this point down here you can hardly see. Come here, and then I just want to extend this out, so I'm pressing S to scale it to make sure I go the full length of the roof. And then again, select subtract first from the second. And now we're mostly finished, but we have this weird piece. So what I'm gonna do, is our ridge is going to be consistent so I can continue this all the way across. I just clicked into this group if you missed that. Uh, and then I'm just going to delete these extra things because we don't actually uh, need them for this. And then I can redraw this part because uh, it's relatively simple. Just select this and this. It should, like you just saw, by connecting those, uh, it made a solid. Now you can see here that this part doesn't exactly line up. So what I'm gonna do is delete that face because I don't need it, and then select this, and then lock to the green axis. I don't actually, but it's automatically locking to that green axis. Uh, but if I hold shift when I'm going in that direction, you can see that it snaps to that face when I um, mouse over to the face while I'm holding um, shift. So then I can just click and that goes away. Now you could um, come into here and you can delete uh, this face. There you go. There we go. So now we have uh, our roof and we got rid of that extra face that we had. So there you go, here are three ways to make different kinds of roofs in SketchUp. Hopefully this helped. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And as always, happy hacking.